Good day, dear chair, dear colleagues, happy to see everybody, even remotely, though remotely. I have two questions. Can we have them on the screen, please? Now you've discussed the microcosm of breast cancer. In my presentation, I regarded the macrocosm, what we are surrounded by when we treat our breast cancer patients. Uh -huh. Question number one. How frequently do you encounter HIV-infected uh, patients with breast cancer? How frequently do you get such patients? I suggest four options of the answer. Very seldom, one, two patients per year, about 10 patients per year, up to 50 patients per year, and over 50 per year. This it? Yeah. yeah, it's very seldom that we encounter such patients, one or two per year. In my practice and in my hospital, we have the same number of such patients. However, we do encounter them from time to time, and most likely in future we're going to have more of them. Next question. I've decided to ask two questions, one before the presentation and after I'll have no questions. Do you have an infectionist in your hospital? Yes, no, but uh, no, but there is an opportunity to consult uh, with an uh, infectionist who is not um, in our hospital, with whether it's uh, HIV or hepatitis B or C or TB. Do you have an infectionist? Is there a way to have a consultation before the treatment? Uh, now we'll see the difference of the situation in the federal centers uh, and in the provinces. Not uh, everything is so bad, it's okay. Please comment. Wow, nearly half of the hospitals do have an infectionist. That's good. Because uh, my task was difficult. I understood that oncologists don't know much about HIV and hepatitis. And the trend nowadays is that uh, the number of such patients with breast cancer and infections keeps growing. Okay, now my 15 minutes for presentation. What's the condition of the problem? Uh, lately, we keep talking about uh, COVID-19, but uh, there have already been some presentations on this uh, topic in the earlier sessions. Uh, if we talk about socially important infections, uh, so far COVID-19 is not included in that list. Uh, so these are HIV, hepatitis B and C, uh, TB, and uh, venereal infections. Uh, uh, that's uh, what is considered to be a socially important um, infection. So I have subdivided this into two uh, parts. Uh, that's HIV and hepatitis. Uh, that's uh, who we treat in our hospital. That's who we encounter more frequently. And uh, TB and sexually transmitted diseases, STD. We still have this uh, uh, problem with these nosologies in Russia. However, we uh, frequent such patients less. We either wait for the resolution of the situation, uh, treatment, or control of the infectious disease, or we assist not in our hospital, but in the TB hospital. We can't do without figures if we are talking about the problem. Let me remind you the epidemiologic data on uh, morbidity with breast cancer. 
some 70,000 new cases every year in the Russian Federation. That's uh, how many breast cancers are diagnosed in Russia annually. It's number one cancer in females of Russia, and number one reason of mortality, unfortunately. Now talking about hepatitis B and C, there are some positive uh, trends. That's what I found from different sources. Um, Mobility goes down gradually. However, about 60,000 new cases, and this is comparable with um, breast cancer, is diagnosed every year in Russia. The species are subdivided differently. Most of them, 77%, have hepatitis C, and the rest, hepatitis B. But the share of hepatitis B keeps going down due to a number of factors. First of all, there's vaccination taking place against hepatitis B. So this trend makes us optimistic. One more important fact of treatment, all the patients get treatment, and that is 82% of the patients that need therapy. Actually, Russia is not the worst in this case in this field. What do oncologists and chemotherapists uh, think when we start the agent therapy, chemotherapy of our patients? We know that some of the drugs are hepatotoxic. New drugs are included in our clinical practice. They are also hepatotoxic. And so we consider what drugs to use. We have a long-term tradition, and uh, we uh, use the child peel classes, whether to, when we consider uh, whether to start the chemotherapy or should we start uh, the therapy with the reduced dose or not. Um, um, colleagues, infectionists assist us. They have a different point of view on this problem. Well, hepatitis C. That's a simpler case. Our colleagues, infectionists, subdivided our patients into several subgroups. Uh, there was even a, a research. Uh, the patients with breast cancer were studied uh, whether they have the viral hep C. And several factors are to be assessed. First of all, the presence of antibodies to Hep C virus, the presence of circulating RNA of Hep C virus, and the clinical factors. A clinical and tool assessment of liver tests and the functions. And we really pay attention to only the patients that we refer to high risk factors with RNA in blood flow and subclinical or already clinical dysfunctions of liver. If we generalize the recommendations of infectionists on treatment of patients with oncology that prescribed a systemic therapy, it's as follows. Yes, often we asked infections to bring down the viral load. We determined the titers. However, the RNA level of circulating uh, Hep C in blood flow doesn't correlate to inflammation, luckily. It doesn't correlate to the level of liver failure. Circulating RNA is not a determinant in that case. Uh, the small research conducted for patients with viral Hep C tell us that, in fact, um, uh, agent therapy doesn't um, uh, reactivate uh, the viral Hep C. Hence, the guideline is as follows. Yes, we do send these patients to get consultation at infectionist. However, the priority is the treatment of cancer, and only after that, infectionists get these patients and treat them against um, Hep C. Um, with Hep D, the situation is 
quite different. The approach is quite different. Several years ago, a big meta-analysis was published. It included the research of patients with viral hep C, hep B, sorry, and breast cancer. So, uh, the antiviral therapy for these patients should be started either simultaneously or before, even before the breast cancer treatment, since the meta-analysis proved that the antiviral therapy brings down the uh, Hep B reactivation risk. Thus, this enables uh, to uh, treat well the breast cancer. This meta-analysis demonstrated that antiviral therapy um, brings down the risk of cancelling of chemotherapy due to reactivation of hepatitis. Our foreign colleagues say that if we have a patient with Hep B, we should uh, prescribe her the antiviral therapy yet before the beginning of a treatment of breast cancer. That's the main difference between Hep C and Hep B. I've tried to adapt the algorithm, which was recently provided by infectionists regarding the treatment of breast cancer in patients with Hep B. Conditionally, yeah, we all understand that uh, we must do the screening when breast cancer is diagnosed. But ideally, we should know the patient's history if she was diagnosed earlier. And uh, if necessary, she should get a certain therapy. Sub patients are subdivided into three groups uh, that um, are called HEP B asymptomatic. It has uh, uh, the viral RNA, and the only group. Uh, these are the patients that may be followed up. However, this group is very small. If we plan the therapy with anticyclins and steroids, toxin therapy, and um, virulinous uh, therapy is allocated separately, still this group of patients should be referred as a high-risk group, and they should have preventive antiviral therapy. Most of our patients diagnosed with breast cancer should get um, antiviral therapy. There's another group uh, without um, Hepatitis, uh, all authors um, discuss the vaccination against Hep B in this subgroup of patients. Um, there are also patients with moderate risks. Um, uh, they get antiviral therapy only during the chemotherapy, plus six months after the systemic treatment of breast cancer. The biggest problem, perhaps, that we encounter and will keep encountering it more frequently in future, that's HIV infection. I was uh, shocked by the figures published by different organizations. At present, Russia is number three regarding the growth of new cases of HIV. We're number three after the African countries, South Africa and Nigeria. Every year in Russia, there are diagnosed from 80 to 90,000 new cases of HIV infection. It was mentioned that in the year 20, the percent uh, was lower, but there were less tests last year as well. 13% less tests were made. This uh, refers to the figures of um, morbidity of the year 1920. Uh, this figure is even higher than that of breast cancer. Well, men have it more frequently, that's 60% of cases, and these are young people aged from uh, 30 to 49 years, 70% are within this age group. Um, all of them um, 
uh, not all of them are registered, and not all of them are getting uh, therapy. Only a bit over half, 53% get um, antiretroviral therapy of the HIV infection. Uh, description of HIV infection. Does it uh, increase the risk of oncology, including breast cancer? It was proved that it's not so. Yes, HIV infection has uh, concomitant diseases like uh, Kaposi's sarcoma, lymphoproliferative diseases. But if we regard the breast cancer statistics, uh, there's no difference uh, in the group uh, with or without um, immunodeficit. However, there are more and more in studies of HIV infection in the world since HIV infection is on the rise. A big meta-analysis was made with um, 20 publications and uh, over 3,000 HIV infected uh, patients were assessed. And it was proved that, yes, um, uh, they do have breast cancer more frequently. 70% have it at the age under 50. One more study, still pretty big. There's the assessment of different uh, regions and ages. Why are the patients so young? Well, the main periods of contamination is young sexually active age, up to the age of 30. See the first columns. I understand it's a comprehensive uh, diagram. It requires some um, con concentration. The first diagram reflects uh, the number of HIV infected in the population. African countries are leading. The second diagram is about the age and breast cancer among HIV infected patients. And the same, the earlier HIV infection is received. Uh, the younger are the patients with breast cancer. If we regard the European countries, uh, we see uh, there's less uh, uh, contamination and breast cancer comes later. The previous meta-analysis uh, proves that African countries uh, um, have the youngest uh, HIV and breast cancer patients. Diagnosis is made in Africa at later stages, hence the uh, disease is more aggressive, or perhaps it's due to the social factors that they come to the doctors later. Subtypes. Triple negative, two positive. <coughs> cancer, frequency same. As for the hormone positive um, uh, cancers, they're a bit more frequent in HIV infected uh, patients. Uh, general survival, HIV infection is a bad uh, negative uh, focused factor. So the uh, death risk goes up to 90% in the general population of uh, patients with both breast cancer and HIV infection. Now let's regard the regions. Uh, to the left is African population. To the right, there's North American civilized country uh, with uh, access to modern medicine. However, uh, there's no distinct difference regarding the risk of um, uh, mortality. So that's uh, an independent uh, negative focus factor. Here is a big uh, South African uh, research. Yes, I'm about to finish time. time. In the South, in South Africa, the general survival at chemotherapy in metastatic breast cancer doesn't differ a lot. However, uh, hormone receptor negative cancers have worse focused. As for Russian population, there are no separate researches on that. The only thing I could find is a publication in St. Petersburg with 15 cancer patients with breast cancer and HIV. Quite often, the concomitant pathology is HEP C and B. Half the known factors of death of HIV infection is due to the progression of malignant diseases. 
Well, uh, what's the present day condition of the problem? It's a good thing that we raise the issue, and I think it should be raised more frequently. We don't have a single register of patients, so it's impossible to compare them. We really do not understand these figures. Uh, prevention is necessary of both the viral infections and uh, malignant tumors. Modern diagnosis is also necessary. We have certain gaps in this field, both the infection diagnosis and a better diagnosis of patients with components and diseases, first of all with HIV, since they have cancer earlier than the general population. These patients are not included in clinical trials. Therapy is not always available. Antiretroviral therapy is received only by 50 percent of all who need it. And there's a necessary multidisciplinary approach for treatment of such patients. We should work in a team with infections. We should have their support when treating such patients. Thanks a lot for your attention.